My name's Liam Griffin, and this is my seminar at Immortal MMA. Right guys, when you're geared up, we'll just get into a few minutes of shadow boxing, shall we? Get warmed up, yeah. So just start off with guys, just getting your feet in stance underneath you a little bit now. So you're just gonna have one person leading the dance a little bit, the other person, so if I step, Craig's gonna step with me. And then in between, nice and smooth, yeah? So I don't want you stepping, Freezing, being flat footed. I just want you stepping smooth. If I step, yeah, if I step, good. If I step forward, good. If I step back, he's going to fall on them. Just making sure every time you step, you're landing in a good position where you can still throw your strikes. Okay, it's just to warm up, get your stance on you and get your feet on you a little bit, yeah? Flex, ruthless, ruthless. Okay, so we're going to throw a kick into the mix now, mate. So when I'm moving now, so if I'm leading the dance, I'm gonna be stepping, and then Craig's waiting for me to th so relax in between, yeah, so stepping, stepping, and then he's gonna wait for me to throw the kick and defend, yeah, defend, and then he's gonna go. So I'm gonna be adjusting to him, so wherever he moves, yeah, and then a block, and then I go again, so I'm gonna step, and I might throw that kick this time, then Craig's go, he can step a little bit first, and yeah, there you go. So just being aware that everyone's range, is gonna be slightly different. So like, ideally you want to be just at the end of your jab, or just a little bit further so you can still land the kick if you want to as well. So everyone's range is gonna be slightly different. So if I'm the one adjusting, I get to choose where the range is, don't I? So if Craig steps first, and I'm stepping, I get to dictate where the range is. So make sure you, so make sure if, the person who's leading takes a big step. I'm not taking a tiny step and he's right in front of my face, you understand? So make sure if you're the one adjusting and moving, you're always landing in your range, okay? So carry on. So you're just gonna put a kick on the end of it now. And then alternate the kicker now. So add a return kick onto that now. Yeah, so, so if Craig's gonna kick me so we can move, kick, and then I'm just gonna defend, kick straight back, okay? So you're just gonna add a kick on the end now. So when you're defending, like I say, you don't wanna be turning your body too much for the blocks. From your stance, you literally just wanna be lifting your legs straight up. Fast return, there, yeah? Fast return, there, okay? Just add a kick on the end now, yeah? Less, ruthless. This is the moment movies get Open it up and have a bit of a back and forth now, guys. So I want you to either touch him with the hands as well. So like, if Craig kicked me, so pull, I can touch, kick back, kick back, kick back, touch, move around, yeah. touch forward, kick, yeah, pull, pull. So add a bit of like a touch, block, return. So it's a bit of a back and forth. The point of doing all this is like to, sort of get your eyes working and notice patterns, what the other person's doing a little bit, so you can block, defend back, touch out. You, as you're touching, using your eyes, seeing what's open, seeing what you can land. So go at your own pace, and then sort of as the round goes on, build up the speed a little bit once you're getting used to, the, used to it, you know. Right, off you go. So I just want to add in a few like fakes and feints into this as well. Um, so for example, again, the point of this is sort of creating patterns, recognizing patterns, and then switching it. Because say for example, I kick, Craig returns. But I do the same again. I kick, but Craig returns. Okay, we've both done the same thing twice there. So it's either I need to switch it up and exploit 
Craig's actions before he does to me. Does that make sense? So this time, I'm going to fake the kick, but Craig's going to block, ba, there, kick. You understand? So I want you to add in either faking the right kick or you can just lift that front leg and draw out a reaction. So same thing again, you can touch, lift, foot there, or, you, or again, like if I bring that up, fake, but there, you understand? So I just want you to add a little bit of faking and fading, and then Craig's go back, then, you know. So you don't have to, you can still touch, kick, move, but it's just about adding a few of them things in, like using your eyes to understand, like, when your opponent's blocking, when he's not blocking, and exploiting that a little bit. Does so everyone get that? Okay, let's talk a bit on this then. So just because your partner's defending the kick, that doesn't mean that's a negative thing. It's just an action that you can work around as well, do you know what I mean? Like, so if Craig defends, again, but fake there. You can always work around, so just because he's defended my, my shot or what I'm trying to throw doesn't mean it's a negative thing. Because you know yourself, when you first start sparring, you go for a kick, you see your partner block, you pull your kick away. That's what everybody does when you first start sparring. That's not a negative thing. If you kick the block, it's not a problem. You can just work around it. Okay, so we're going to move on to working in some leg kicks now. Because this translates pretty well to, to the guys that do MMA as well. So, we're just going to work um, three things now. So, the first one is going to be timing the leg kick off me moving in. So, first off, you see a lot of guys, if we're quite a distance away, I'll move in fast. Both feet come off the floor. You know 100% you can land the leg kick then, because I can't defend it. Both feet come off the floor on the land, but you know you can land the leg kick, yeah? Okay, the next one is when I'm boxing. Because when I'm boxing, my legs have got to be heavy, yeah? More so, when I'm jabbing, I can still jab and block, but I can't throw the right hand and block with my front leg either. So really, you want to be timing it when the back hand comes. So bah, there, there you go, yeah? And then the last one is off me throwing a kick. So there, but, so wait for me okay. first mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can check the kick and then return, but again, if I'm fast, I'll block. But, I mean, it's not always ideal, but if you do end up taking the kick on the arm, you know you can land that kick because I'm on one leg. Okay, so we're just gonna, so we're gonna alternate on that, so you're just gonna work through them three. So the first one, you're gonna time me jumping in, but there, yeah. Next one, wait for the right hand, so but, yeah, there, there. Wait for the right hand, good. And then the last one, you're gonna take the body kick, but there, return the leg kick, okay? Just gonna work through them three. Alternating on that for a few minutes, yeah? Okay. If Craig jumps in at me, again, I just want to move, similar to what we were doing with the first drill, where we were stepping and moving, I want to step and land in a position, see how my heels lifted, hips forward, I'm in a position where I can kick straight away, yeah? So again, so if Craig jumps in, but there, little adjustment, again, getting the right range, and then with the leg kick, I'm not really turning right over. I'm literally snatching at it like that. So again, so Craig jumps in. So I'm taking a little step back, back there, yeah? And then same with that right hand. So again, adjusting my stance. So if Craig throws a one-two and he's moving forward with it, but, but, so I'm just taking the punches strong on my guard, but just adjusting my feet a little bit. And then again, when that right hand lands, back nice and snatchy with it, yeah? Because what you don't want is Craig keep on punching, but I've turned my hip over and I'm getting chinned. You know what I mean? He wants to be there, stack, but, but, I can go if I want to. Bah, 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 there. You understand? Keep going, keep going. All of that stuff was like uh, finding the low kicks off of a counter. So now you're going to find the low kicks off striking first now, yeah. So, it's quite hard, once, once your opponent knows you're going after the leg, he's going to start lifting that front leg a lot. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the jab. Sorry, my jab. My bad. So we're going to start with the jab, and what happens a lot of the time is like, say if Craig jabs me and pushes me back, because my weight goes on the back leg, my front leg automatically comes off, so it makes it easy for me to block that leg kick then. Yeah. So the first one, all you're going to do is jab. Craig's going to lift that leg up. Yeah, to, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm going to jab, Craig's going to lift, no, 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 block it, block the leg kick, yeah. So I'm going to step, Craig's going to lift the leg to block, I'm just going to control the posture and chop. Because again, a lot of the time, guys will jab, hook, to the leg kick, but if a fighter's small, they always know that that side's coming after the hook. So I want you to control the posture a little bit now. So again, so I'm going to jab. Craig's block's gonna come up, boom, there, that, bah, there, okay? Yeah, okay. So the next one, again, so I'm gonna jab, Craig's block's gonna come back up again because he thinks I'm gonna leg kick, boom, I'm gonna step through and chop that back leg this time, okay? Yeah, so there, so I'm gonna jab, weight comes up, boom, there, chop that back leg. And then the last one, again, similar to the stuff that we did with the jump in, you know when that weight comes back down on that front leg, you can chop it. So, the last one, I'm going to jab, I'm going to lift my leg, which makes Craig lift this, but, and then when it comes down, you won't remember what that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to touch, lift up, which makes Craig lift, down there, come down. That also works against someone, normally the smaller guy is going to be the, the low kicker. So if the taller guy is using his push kicks a lot, so if you put there, push kick again, but to stop the push kick, a lot of the time you just lift that front leg. So Craig goes to push kick, boom, there, straight away. So if he's push kicking a lot, just lift to stop the push kick, boom. As soon as that weight comes back down on that leg, you can chop the leg. Okay, so you're gonna do them three. So jab, when the weight comes up, control the posture, kick. The next one, you're gonna jab, chop the back leg, and then jab, lift to draw the same reaction. Kick the leg as it comes back down. Okay, so you're gonna go through that three. You gotta give it all you got, you gotta let them know. You are on another level, you are ruthless. Switch it up, it's the new flag. Like that a lot, mate. I like it. A lot. A lot. I like it, mate. Can you kiss? No, no. <laughs> camera. <laughs> have to, have to, mate. You wanna go? Jab and then push. Just push my hand. Back there. So like jab, but I'm there. Yeah, I wouldn't switch. I wouldn't switch. Step up. So like if I'm there, but that leg comes up. Pal, so you're stepping yeah, that so right. like there. You're not even like changing stances. You're sort of coming square and back. And this is like quite specific to Thai boxing, really. But the principles of it are good. So we're going to move on to the long guard now. Okay. So the long guard's good. Like, one, if you stay in the normal boxing guard, so there, sort of invites me to be able to step close to you and hit you. Okay, so the long guard's good for keeping, being able to use my eyes, but also having a good gauge of my range as well. Okay, so one of you's just gonna be throwing the one-two hook, and then the other person's gonna be using the long guard. So now with the long guard, you want to protect your chin with this shoulder, whichever arm's coming out, protecting your chin with your shoulder, this hand nice and closed, because you don't want it open, so if this is your normal guard, or however, whatever combat sport you're doing, if it's open and you're long guarding, you don't want a big hole down the middle, so there, closed with the back hand, but so you can still use your eyes, there, chin protected, arm out, and then you aim in, for your partner's head, basically. So Craig throws a one-two hook, but, 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 there. And then this backhand can adjust. So if it's straight punches, it's straight. If it's hooks, there, can move, can move, yeah? But that one, you need to make sure you're protecting your chin. So just one person hitting, one person defending, because I want you to get comfortable just being able to sit in that. And again, legs, not upright. You don't want me taking the punches and getting banged about and off balance. Sturdy in your legs, boom. Because after, after you take the shots, you want to either be able to counter or move off, yeah? So just get comfortable taking the one-two hook there, okay? Off you go. When um, you don't want to be leaving your arm out the whole time. So, if I'm against Craig now, 
And he puts out the long rod. Swap stands for me. So if he puts out the long rod and he just holds it there, easy counter, yeah? So he wants B, as he's punching, so if you punch me now, mate, out, out. Being able to put it out and take it back as well, yeah? You don't want to be leaning on someone. So he wants B, as he's punching, out, out, and then back, can move, yeah? Okay, yeah? So box, box, box. Yeah, so you can either wait until the end of the combo, move out, come back in, and strike back, or if Craig throws, boom, counter in as he throws. Yeah, so long guard again, so strike, but there. Yeah, okay. Or you can, not just the kick, you can go with the knee as well. But just having to think, guys, so I know for this drill we're sticking with the same stuff, but like, if your opponent's throwing straight punches, good time to throw the kick. Yeah, because he's long, you can roll that under his arms. When he's throwing the hook, boom, good time for the knee. Okay, because he's around and you're coming straight down the middle. So there's always a risk. If I throw the knee whilst he's still throwing the straight punch, he can boom, hit me. Okay, so like, be a good time to time the knee on the hook there. Boom, there, okay? Yeah, off you go. Find, find your mark with it a little bit so you can kick on the straight punches, knee on the hook, okay? Or move off, wait till the punches are finished, move off, come back in and hit them again. Times like you can always get caught a little bit. Ruthless, ruthless, ruthless. If you never risk it, then you'll never know. If it's holding you back, you gotta let it go. That was the source. The source? The source. The source of the noise. Watch this one. Watch this one. Oh, okay. Boom! Ooh! Tamu's elbow did that. Yeah. The t-shirts available from wigsplitters.com. <laughs> when is getting it? You don't want that, mate. Uh, Brake sponsored by uh, Dragon Energy. Is that good? <laughs> This next part, we'll work on the clinch a little bit now, yeah. So um, to start with, we'll just we'll just work on entering the clinch a little bit. So so, so if you put your hands up, mate, yeah. So first, you're just going to start with a knee, to and then you're going to fall into the clinch. So here, I'm just going to throw my well left, you guys right. So I'm going to throw my left. This hand stays up. This hand goes towards the head, lifted, and then from here, you're going to fall into the clinch. Okay, so you're gonna knee, fall into the clinch. Okay, and then square up. If you've done, cl done yeah, clinch and stuff yeah. like Nathan, Nathan did a bit in this yeah, yeah. as well, didn't he? Yeah. So we're just gonna start with that. So again, so if you watch, so I'm gonna knee, but hand comes out. Again, similar to the long guard, the hand comes out, this one stays tight, arm comes out to protect the chin, but fall into the clinch, yeah. So again, so I'm gonna knee, Fall, fall. So when you fall, you can either land and control the arms, or land, hand on the neck, and then head into the chest. But just, just a note now guys, like, just something to think about when you're in the clinch. Whichever side your head is, that's where your body weight's going. So a lot of people, what they'll do, they'll enter the clinch, fall in, and then just bulldoze in their head first. And all my weight's going to that side, so Craig can just sweep me there. So if I fall in and bulldoze there, Craig can sweep me on this side. But there, easy. Because all my weight's going on that side. So what you either want to do is knee, fall in, walk, brace yourself. Yeah, so you don't get sweeped. Or if it's sort of too late for that, you can knee, fall in, and then if Craig sweeps, but just hop over the sweep, nice and easy, yeah? Okay, so you're gonna do that. So you're gonna enter the clinch, butt knee, enter the clinch, walk, either brace your legs, or just hop over the sweep, whichever side your head lands, yeah? Okay, start off with that then. Father and son, they're immortal. It's a family affair. Again, with that, sometimes like, again, when you're in the clinch, so you're gonna start on this. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. So you're gonna start on this inside position again. Head into the chest. So we are come, come up there, mate. Um, Again, so I'm gonna give Craig again my body weight, depending on which side my head is. 
I'm going to give him the body weight and that's the side that he's going to sweep. So here I'm going to push him to him and then he's going to sweep me. But, so here now I'm going to either sit into him and sometimes if he really goes for the sweep, so there I can almost chuck him down. You know what I mean? If I sit in, I almost clothesline him, you know, like WWE style. So it's like, if I'm there, and sometimes I'm a little bit too late, I'm like, I'm walking and I'm like, shit, he's gonna sweep me here. Chuck him down with you, just clothesline him, there. And then the other reversal, so here again. Hold on, mate, uh, So again, I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna go back to that first one that I did, where I jumped the sweep. So go there. So sweep properly, mate, yeah? So that jump, and then you can chuck it down. So you're jumping over the sweep and dragging it down over your leg there, yeah. So again, it depends on which side your head is. It's just also on the other side, something to be conscious of. Because if you're in the clinch, you end up in a lot of positions where you don't even think about where your head is or where your body weight is, and then next minute you're on your arse. So it's just something to think about. So them two reversals. So again, whichever side your head is when you're walking, you're gonna sit, throw them down, or the other one, if you catch it in time, jump over the sweep, drag them down. Okay? Time off you go. We'll alternate on this a little bit, so we'll do one round, one person, then we'll swap over. So the position I want you working is this position here. So if you watch, I'm on Craig's triceps here. This is a good position in Titan because I can literally manoeuvre wherever I want. Okay, so we're just going to use the knee and then reversing on the knee. So if I, if I need you and you just use that knee and not me. So like I'm going to knee first because I want to get a reaction. I want Craig to knee me back here. So I'm gonna knee, there, little shove. See, hips come out, little shove back. And then after, I'm gonna knee back, okay? And then the next one, I'm gonna knee, turn, knee again, okay? So that one, it's almost like a bit of a steering wheel. You're turning and moving that leg around, knee. And then if I was going the other way, turning, knee, okay? The next one, again, I'm here, I'm gonna knee, I'm pulling him back into me, knee again, okay? And then the last one, I'm gonna knee, Craig knees, foot, there, sweet, nice and easy. So, one, one pointer for the knee, what I want you doing is, when you knee, you're not kneeing straight up like that, because again, Craig can sweep the side like I've just done, foot, there, nice and easy, yeah? So, what you need to be doing when you knee, is you still wanna be kneeing the midsection, but see how there's a little tilt in my hip there? That's to stop Craig getting around the side. So when I knee, but Craig can't get around the side there. See, you understand? So it's just to negate, but there, but not straight up, but there. And it's also in a fight, stops you from kneeing the other person in the balls as well. So instead of going, but there, you're out with a little, you don't have to, I'm over exaggerating it a little bit there. You don't have to put your leg all the way out, but, but little turn, then back, okay? So the first one, you're kneeing, little shove out, knee again, okay? Knee, turn, knee, knee, pull back, knee, and then knee, sweep the leg, okay? Just a pointer guys, like, you don't wanna be standing in stance when you're in the clinch, because you can't use your front knee then. Makes, you can't do anything with that, and you're off balance. Square, square in the clinch. There. Knee, knee. You can use either knee. But, you can turn that way, turn that way. Good, strong balance. Okay? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know any questions already. I'm, I'm, I'm a student just as much as you, Daniel. You know what I mean? You're getting a better beard than me as well, so you, you know, like, keep, keep that trimmed. Keep that trimmed. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. All right, give it just a, a break from our sponsors, Dragon Energy. Um, drag, drag, Dragon Energy. First step is showing up, hear them chill. Yeah, the first step is showing up, now we're here. We're blowing up. 
<laughs> Did you just see the wanker sign in boxing day? <laughs> <laughs> you can't help but do it, can you? So hands on mate. So if you start off, if you go one on the neck, create one on the neck, one on the outside, so we're both doing the same thing, and then if you square up mate, yeah, it's a normal pinch position. So here now what you're going to start with, one person's just going to run through a few elbow positions. So start with here, whichever knee, whichever knee, Craig's box, sorry, so whichever arm Craig's using on my neck, I'm going to knee the same side. So I'm going to knee, and then that normally loosens the position a little bit. So there, going to pop out, see if my shoulder comes down, parry down a little bit. You're not parrying all the way down there. You're just popping your shoulder out, knocking the arm down, but there, okay? So that's the first one. So there, knee, but, but, there, okay? And then the next one, you're going to thread up, make a little bit of space, but, elbow, okay? Because a lot of people forget, like, when you're threading up, what, the, what Craig should do there is lock my arm straight away. There, yeah, against you, against you. There, to stop that elbow. You understand? But a lot of people, because they're thinking about the neck, they forget, oh, that elbow's there, okay? And then the next position you're gonna go to from there, you're gonna wrap over. Now what you need to do here, see this, this arm on the neck, that needs to change to the arm, or else Craig can just go to the body lock from here. There, see? So, from there, hold on mate. First position again, we're gonna thread on. Elbow, wrap the arm, then that hand needs to control the arm there. Head's going to go in, and then what I'm going to do with this arm now is hand on the shoulder, make a little bit of space, roll the elbow over the top of the shoulder. So they're the three that we're going to do. So you're going to go there, one arm, both one arm in, knee, pop out, elbow, next position, thread up, make a bit of space, elbow, Thread the arm, move from the neck to the arm, head in, hand on the shoulder, make a bit of space, roll the elbow over the shoulder, yeah? So you've got to run through them positions and swap over, yeah? And I'm literally, because here now, you're probably both going to be kneeing each other, so we probably won't notice this transition. So you go from there to the shoulder, and then all I'm going to do is make a bit of a yeah. Again, if we go one and one, my bad, mate. Yeah. That one on my neck. Yeah, there. So here, again, square up. So here, you'll find yourself in this position a little bit. Again, one and one. But here, if Craig's got a strong lock on my neck, extend that now, okay? Yeah, this is a good position. So here, making sure I'm controlling the inside of this arm. There. So from here, I can literally turn my shoulder and that'll pop me out of the clinch there. So if I want to exit the clinch from there, so if Craig, Craig's got a strong lock on there, but turn my shoulder, I can just exit the clinch if I want to there. But to be honest, that's a really good position to be in. So like, even though Craig's got the inside position on my neck, because I'm pushing his face away, I'm in a good strong position here. So here, I can knee and he can't see it coming. If, I, if this arm becomes free after kneeing a few times, I can swap my hands, but, but, there, and then back to it. So, ba, ba, there, and then if you square up again, mate. So, if this arm isn't free, because if Craig was smart, he'd control this arm, yeah? So, he's got control of this arm. So, if you're there, yeah, there, mate. So, there. So, if I knee, Craig's going to want to knee me back. But, step around with an elbow on the outside. If this arm isn't free, this is the easy go-to. If you're pushing his face away, knee, if you get this arm free, but there, but there. But if Craig was smart, he'd trap it, so I can't do anything there. So I'm gonna knee, wait for Craig to knee me back so he's on one leg, step around that side, okay? Have a go with that. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do, after I knee a few times, boom, this, this grip loosens because he's thinking about the knees, I'm gonna swap my hands, boom, then back, and then swap my hands, boom, back, there you go. If you find yourself controlling the posture on that inside position, using the knees, all, all the stuff that we've done to control the knees and reverse the knees as well, yeah? And, and again, the sweeps and reversing the sweeps. Yeah, so just have, try and put it all together in your mind a little bit. I know we've gone over a lot of stuff, but just uh, give it a go. We'll have 
Five, five or so minutes, I'm clinching now. This uh, obviously Liam's come all the way down from Stoke. He's opened up his new gym in Stoke now. Uh, Sua, Sua Muay Thai. Thai. But yeah, he's come down in the first seminar, 23 and 3. But uh, give him a round of applause. Yeah.